my name is Hikerzan, and this is the Platinum Trophy Overview for Cult of the Lamb. Before we get into this one, guys, remember to subscribe if you like the content so you don't miss my other trophy hunting videos. Dudes, bros, cheese bags, whatever else you are, finally, we finally got the patch that let us get the Platinum Trophy. I want to release these for new games and indie titles while they're still fresh and while the information isn't necessarily easy to come by, uh, but there kind of has to not be any bugs preventing the Platinum Trophy, which was a huge red flag for this one. I saw Splattercat play this way back, he was doing either like an early access or an early demo or something like that, and I freaking loved it. It's a roguelite, it's edgy and satanic, but also adorable, with an awesome combat focus and even a little bit of a light sieve type manager, definitely right up my alley. That being said though, like I mentioned earlier, rose tinted glasses, man, I really ignored a lot of red flags early on and didn't really start catching them until the end after that nice newness kind of wore off. Getting into a bit about the game and the trophy list overview, right? So again, awesome game. I really loved it. Really unique premise here. Not enough games do the whole dark and edgy satanic route. And the ones that do usually take themselves way too seriously or they just come off as tacky and silly. Not this one. I mean, they, they knew what they were doing and it, it worked really well. It came off super well. It was hilarious with a great sense of humor, but it was also a pretty, pretty damn dark. There's this spider guy you buy followers off of and he uh, talks about how crunchy their bones are when he eats them which is pretty sweet and i think one of my favorite parts when you get so many followers they ask you to do side quests and one of the times this guy wanted me to he, he picked a specific other cult member and said oh wouldn't it be so funny if we pranked him and made him eat a bowl of shit and i was like okay yeah let's all right that's a little messed up but let's do it cool whatever you do it you get rewarded and if you don't do it you lose faith uh, very important and we'll get into that later but then the next day same dude came up to me and said oh man wasn't that so great that was so funny let's do it again i was like dude what are you serious i love messed up stuff and that was man we're making the same dude eat shit twice that's kind of messed up it's of course hilarious but it also gets really dark and it's this really weird but awesome balance that they managed to hit with this game I mean, it's a super small dev team, and again, really ambitious, really impressive. They really knocked it out of the park with this, even with some of the bugs that we'll address later. In the trophy list, I really loved as well. There's barely any reliance on the RNG, uh, which is super awesome for a roguelite. I mean, we, we've all been there before. But you're so unlikely to not get the RNG controlled parts just through natural playtime. And it encourages you to do most things, but not literally everything, which is always a good feeling too. I will say, I thought it was kind of strange that about half the game is, is cult management, right? Yet not many trophies actually revolve around that. Sure, there are trophies about getting so many followers, but that's tied into progression, or sacrificing so many cult members and some various other things, but you don't really need much of the Civ skill tree as a whole. I'm not complaining though, the leveling did get pretty tedious at the end and there were plenty of skills I didn't even have an interest in from that tree, whether it's more farming stuff or sending out your cult members for more resources, whatever it may be, it definitely helped avoid any kind of tedious grind. Most of the trophies are progression, of course, and collecting everything, but even the trophies for collecting all weapons and the curses, which are the spells in this, are done super well and are very generous. Most roguelike games would be entirely dependent on RNG, again, just getting lucky and running into the things you need in the dungeons, but nope, these are just tied to unlocking them as a possibility in your run, not actually getting them, so once you get it unlocked, bam, you're good for the trophy. There are some no-hit trophies for the main bosses as well. They range from pretty easy to a decent little challenge. Nothing crazy, but you can't just breeze through them either. It's a nice little balance. Talking about the time factor and how the time spent playing actually felt uh, is a little tricky with this one. Probably, most likely, you're gonna land between 15 and 25 hours. When I did it, there weren't any guides up, so everybody was still kind of learning together. 
I had to, again, wait for a patch, like I mentioned earlier, and I actually had to do an entire new save file for one trophy that did not get fixed in the patch, unfortunately. So the actual time placement is a little tricky coming from my perspective, but it, it's not long by any means at all. I mean, the overall pacing is very solid. The starting pace is a bit on the slower side, especially with your cult, uh, and that does reflect into the dungeons as well, because every time you go back into a dungeon after clearing the main boss, the enemies get stronger, and if you don't have the weapon and curse upgrades, it's very noticeable. Sometimes the runs can get tedious and you just want to choose the shortest path, which is fine, but the, the pacing in the beginning kind of spreads that out a little bit. I, I really did enjoy almost every minute of my time with the game, uh, minus the bugs. Uh, again, which let, let's get into that because that, that's where it got really, really frustrating. We all know that almost every game ever is going to have some amount of bugs on launch, right? Like what kind of game doesn't launch with a day one patch? That's fine. A lot of the time, that's not a problem when it comes to trophy hunting. And we do see that a little bit more commonly when it comes to indie games and smaller dev teams. But there was one specific bug that messed up spawn rates and made the Platinum unattainable for a while. And uh, the, the devs eventually got to it. Obviously, we have the Platinum now. That's great. But I was in the Discord staying uh, active and communicating with everybody. And PC got, like, so many more patches before console, which I know it's easier there. It makes sense. Uh, I know Sony and Xbox can have different patch cycles and stuff like that. But it, it was still a little on the frustrating side. And that that's not all the bugs, though. Even not looking at it from a trophy hunting standpoint, man, there was just a lot of stuff I, I missed early on because I was so infatuated with the game. Every time the game switched over to a new day, it, it would it seemed like it was gonna crash because of how bad the frames dropped it was nuts and that happened every time some of the rituals would get messed up in the last dungeon biome enemies would go off the screen be invisible and you just couldn't progress you were forced into leaving again when i got to the grindier parts and i was crashing left and right back and forth losing progress having to redo dungeons there was a lot of stuff that i, I it was there I just didn't really see it. It also did get more extreme the further I got, but it was still there, and I kind of just ignored it because the game was so good, but then once you think about the bugs, you're like, man, this is a little messy. This needs fixed. And a lot of it is getting fixed, so again, great communicative devs, but man, I just ended up feeling so... I don't know, weird against the game, because I, I really did love it. Probably one of my more favorite indie titles of the year. But by the end, being platinum ready, just waiting and waiting for that patch. And then once the patch hit, I still had to redo another save, even though one of the mods in the Discord tracked the other glitch I was having for the other trophy, said he mentioned to the devs, but then nothing happened. I don't know, just by the end of it, I, I, as much as I loved the game, it was still like, dude, I'm just so ready to be done. I, I don't want to do this anymore. Which is so weird to feel that way towards a game that you enjoy so much. But that's just kind of how it happened. And that's kind of the risk you run into starting uh, indie titles on launch, right? Because you never know how it's going to go. They don't have a ton of QA. So still, still a great time. Just weird feelings for it. That being said, it's still an incredible piece of art, and again, done by such a small team. I don't hold any of this against them, and I still had a great time. You know, it happens. Bugs happen even with huge teams, so not really a big deal, especially anymore. Uh, it's just always a bummer to have to put a Platinum on the back burner until patches come through, and this video is about my personal experience with it. At face value, all being fixed, it's a reasonable amount of time and really fun. It's still roguelite, so it's going to give you the fun of that genre, but it's not going to be so unforgiving like most of them, uh, so you can get the enjoyment without having to dedicate your lives. Plus, if you like the edgy satanic stuff, which I absolutely do, then it's super fun, and you're going to love it. You're going to have a great time. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, and don't forget to subscribe so you can catch my other trophy hunting videos. See you guys on the next one. <laughs> Productions. <laughs>